Another thing I want to talk about that I haven't yet is how, how, <laughs> are you kidding me? I'd say they like it on the paws. Oh, that's a big small mouth or what? But uh, they were on it. There's three of them right there. There's my jerk bait. There's a couple of fish rising. <laughs> All right, guys. Tell me that ain't the bait they want tonight. Hey guys, welcome back to another uh, fill-in episode of G3 Sportsman. It's not actually a fill-in because Scott is back, as you guys have seen the last couple episodes, and he's behind the camera. So uh, we're gonna do something a little different. I'm always trying to, to rally for us bass guys that have Scott do some bass shows. They don't do quite as well as the crappie shows, but we're gonna change that because you guys are gonna like this and share this and do the whole thing on YouTube. What I'm doing today, I'll get right to it. I am coming back in these major creeks. It's early spring, the fish are pre-spawn. What I'm looking for today is shad, that's it. I am gonna be fishing around the balls of shad and on active target, which is gonna be another crucial part of this episode, we are gonna show you how sometimes when you watch these shad balls, you can actually see fish feeding these shad balls live on your live sonar. I caught one last night dropping on them. I caught one casting on them. Come along with us and we're gonna show you how to use this active sonar. Oh, they were, they were racing at it, two of them. That's the thing that sucks about this is you get to see all those times where these fish are on top of you and just about to eat and then don't. All right, guys, you know what? I'm, I'm sick of driving around graphing. I've been catching these fish out deep the last couple nights, but I'm gonna pick up the jerk bait here, Mega Bass 110 Junior Plus One, and I'm gonna go to work up shallow because I know for I've ruled one thing out, they're not out deep anymore. So I'm just gonna see what I can catch up shallow. This active target's still an effective tool up shallow, and I'm actually seeing some fish here, so let's let's just see if they've moved up shallow. Fish all over there. <laughs> you know that's the thing about live sonar too. Oh, you got us a big small mouth or what? Is my drag just too loose? See, that's the thing about live sonar is I'm thinking where are all the fish? Oh, 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 stay on there. And then live sonar's telling me they're up there sunning. Oh, look at this large mouth. Stay on there. Come here, come here, come here. Oh, he's got to do it to me right there at the boat. <laughs> Look at that big head. Look at that big head right there. Guys, I'm out here trying to find fish out deep because that's where I've been finding them. I'll tell you what live sonar will do is it'll tell you when all those fish are up swimming shallow. You'll hear me in this clip just telling Scott, man, there's some fish up shallow. You think they're sunning? And what do you know? If I can get the hooks out of this thing. Old big head. First fish of the day. Not a bad fish at all. So this will get us started, guys. I didn't watch it eat, but let me tell you, that's part of this whole active, active target thing is you don't have to watch them eat. Let that tell you where they are and get back to fishing. If I wouldn't have cast it in, I was trying to watch it, would have never happened. We've got, a, we've got a fish sitting here suspended, guys. 60 feet, so I'm gonna creep in a little further so I can come in behind him, not cast right on top of him. I can cast it about 60 feet. Keep an eye on this here. I'll show you how this works. It's kind of hard, guys, so bear with me, but I'm gonna try to make a cast on top of that fish. Okay, he's gone away, so I'm gonna aim back left. Let's see if we can find the jerk bait coming in. There's the fish. Oh, we got one on it. Two of them. Oh! I mean, they are all over. You should film this. Eat it. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
gosh, it's so fun when it works though. Another big largey. <laughs> oh guys, these hooks I'm using, these Mega Bass hooks, everybody's always complaining about them bending out, but it's because your drag's too tight. So I like keep a light drag. You see what I'm fishing it on, uh, Mega Bass Ronin, and it'll handle fish like this, no problem. Those hooks are sticky if you just let them do their job. Uh oh. Oh, look at the belly. These fish are gorging themselves on shad. Another nice large mouth there. That's fun, guys. You saw me. I don't know if we had the camera rolling. I know we had the GoPro rolling. Let me just turn this. But uh, they were on it. There's three of them right there. And they were all over it. And it's just an interesting thing when you're watching them on live sonar and they're just covering that bait. And the next thing you know, dunk, they get it. It's a lot of fun. Okay, guys, so we got a couple fish on the bottom here. I'm trying to work this jerk bait over the top of them. Should be coming in pretty soon. And the fish looks like it's coming off the bottom on us. Yep, he's on me. You guys see that? It's hard to see, but he's on the jerk bait. So you gotta really, there's a bigger fish back there too. Oh, he's shooting up. See that? Oh, here they come. <laughs> no, tell me how fun that is. You don't need it, yeah. They don't always, they don't, I mean they're, see I'm working it. Come on, gotta stay on them. Now they're going down. Hope they're still on it. There he is. <laughs> there, it's just a bunch of two, three pound largemouth right here. Now that's a belly on that sucker. I want this one in the boat. Come on, look at the red eyes on him. Look at that fish. He just swallowed it. Look at him, he's got a mouthful of, look at the belly. <laughs> I mean, there's just a pot of them down there. Look at the belly on these things, guys. They are just gorging on shad. We captured it for you guys. You don't have to have active target, but right there was a great example of that cast right there. I would have probably started reeling it in at the boat, being done with that cast, but you saw, I almost backed up and quit, and that fish was still on it. And then he took it on the paws. Good little healthy fish. <laughs> Look at the belly. You know, I've been really committing myself to learning this active target. And um, mostly I use it deep, but I haven't had it for a full spring. I got this boat midsummer last year. I haven't been able to utilize it shallow, but today I'm kind of seeing how it can be used. We're less than 15 feet. And what I've done is I pulled up on this first point. You guys heard me say, I'm done going deep. We caught a fish first cast, a good one. And I'm seeing fish follow this jerk bait two or three at a time. And it's taking a little bit. That one bit right at the boat. But if you work this jerk bait, that's the good thing about a jerk bait with active target is you can see it pretty well. And also you can stop it extends your cast a little bit, which is important. And when you watch that fish eat, it really had to, we really had to milk that fish out because he did not want to eat and he ate at the last second. So I'm gonna go through here, I'm gonna burn this bank, I'm gonna watch my active target. I don't necessarily have to watch them eat it, but it's kind of helping me see where the fish are, how shallow they are, and how fast or slow I need to fish. So let's see what we can figure out. I think there's some smaller Kentuckys over on this side. I think the big largemouth are. Oh, it's a big, is it a big smallmouth? Maybe it's a Kentucky, it's kind of dark. What do we got here? Oh, he's fighting like a smallmouth. What do we have? Got my drag loose because these mega bass hooks, they do not like. They'll bend down on you. Oh, it's a big smallmouth, guys. Really nice smallmouth. No wonder he smoked it. Stay on there, baby. Good night, how fun is this, guys? All three species, largemouth, smallmouth, spotted bass. Come here, go. Come here. 
Trying not to block the camera, but I'm gonna have to for a second. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> all right, guys. We got all three species here tonight. I mean, we have found them and we have found them. They are loaded on this point. And look how they're eating it. I'm having a hard time getting them off for the camera because they're just annihilating it. I didn't watch that one eat, guys. I just went fishing. I just made a cast because I knew they were in here. And sometimes that's what you gotta do. Guys, we're on Table Rock Lake here. We are fortunate here in the Midwest where we live because you can spin a bottle like Scott says and it'll hit water. And on Table Rock, you can catch smallmouth, spotted bass, and largemouth on the same point, just like we have tonight. So if you guys are coming in, it is not an easy lake to fish. It can be finicky. So if you're coming in from out of town and you want to fish it, maybe hire a guide. Check out MJF Guide Service. He'll get you on some of these smallmouth. And uh, hopefully this is helping you out a little bit tonight. We got some time left and uh, want to see if we can't catch one even bigger. See this fish right on my jerkbait right here? Now he swam down to the bottom. He's on it again. Jerkbait moved. He's shooting on it. On it. Paused. Off it. A couple more below him. Oh. Now I'm, now I'm off it. Oh. There's a pile of fish there. Come up and get it. Come up and get it. Come on. It's actually a pretty nice fish right there. Uh, you know, came in here tonight. We had one thing in mind. We were going to get them deep, and we were doing nothing that we said we were going to do for this episode. And I'm okay with it because I'm catching them. But conditions are different. It is sunny. Where the last two days it's been cloudy and the wind has been blowing. So these fish moved up on the bank. I, I came in here and we, we, we used our 2D sonar and we had balls of shad everywhere. They were just gone. So the only thing we could figure, they've moved shallow. And sure enough, I'd say they're shallow. <laughs> Kentucky. Boy, he's mad. You guys, that is a perfect example. The first thing you're going to want to do when you start active target fishing, the live sonar fishing, is when you see those fish fly up on your bait, you're going to want to stop it because that's just your that's just your instinct. And with a jerk bait, it actually sometimes works. Obviously, it's a jerk bait, just a little Kentucky. But uh, oh, it's an art, man. It's it's. Day by day, you've got to decide, okay, do they want it slowed down or do they want it pop, 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 and that's where they commit. You'll see it live, hence the sonar, as you're doing it. So if, they're, if they stop it and they seem to eat it, which today, if I'm pausing it, they seem to be eating it. And if they want it faster, then they want it faster, you'll know that, which you would never otherwise know if you couldn't see under the water. Look at this fish, he's blind. He got hooked in the eye one, one day. We're gonna let them go. That's gonna be a long spot. There's some big ones in here. Yeah, they, oh, I got my Lorance hoodie on underneath here. So we'll show them a little love since they're helping us catch some of these fish. You know, guys, there's that's another thing. I call it live scope. I feel kind of silly sometimes, but I, it's just what I call it. And that's Garmin. Okay, here I am using Lorance active target. So don't make fun of me if you hear me call it live scope. I think some of you guys can relate. Another thing I want to talk about that I haven't yet is how, how, <laughs> are you kidding me? I'd say they like it on the pause and that might be a good one. <laughs> you think it's another small mouth? Is it a spot or a large mouth? That's, that's what we don't know. It could be anything in here. She's digging, but man, it's so fun on these spinning rods. I mean, you could not have more, more fun catching fish on a jerk bait on a spinning rod. It's another small mouth. Another good smallmouth, and look at the bellies on these fish. <laughs> look at the bellies on these fish. All right, not a bad one, it'll keep. Come here, don't hook me, don't hook me. Whoop. Oh, come here. Let me try this, how about that, Scott's that better? That's the pro way. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
I'm trying to I'm trying to talk and look how he ate it. I'm trying to talk and this fish just ate this thing on the pause, which is part of what we were talking about. That wasn't, that wasn't a fake. That was no fake. I'm not kidding. I took my hoodie off. And I, I, who knows, maybe he was there when I started jerking it, but I think I got a few more jerks in and he bit. So they definitely like it on the paws and boy, they want this jerk bit. I'll tell you the hardest thing's gonna be not coming out here every day until this stops. <laughs> so how fun, that's, that's just a 15 inch uh, small mouth. She's getting fat too. But uh, we've got some really nice ones in the live well, guys. We're, we're gonna just take a few pictures with them and let them go. I promote catch and release all the time. I'm gonna do it right here. Look at the colors. This lake is full, I mean full of healthy smallmouth bass. It is, uh, this lake is a, a lake that has been dammed here in the Midwest. The James River and the Kings River, river are two of the main river arms in it. And that uh, flows down to Long Creek uh, in the main lake area. But how many other places can you go and catch all three species like this? Man, what a what a great what a great episode we're putting together so far. I'm hoping you're enjoying it. If you are, um, if you are, like and subscribe. We're having to do the GoPro thing. You're seeing some of that. We're trying to shoot a little more raw. We're trying to give you guys a little more behind the scenes. You know, we're not always going to tell you where we're at because this is taking me a couple days to find this this creek fishing like this. But you guys understand that. I'm sure some of you will figure it out. But uh, we hope you do. That's why we want you to watch. So. As a thank you for that, maybe just give us a like and subscribe. Oh, we're just getting started, man. Summertime, shoot, come out here, even after dark. If you don't have to be home, don't quit fishing because the sun went down. I mean, I know a lot of you guys know that, but a lot of you guys may, may not. I mean, those fish will feed hard. And then the great thing is that clock's not counting down on you. If, you're, if you plan on staying after dark, them night tournaments, man, they weigh 20 plus pound bags often. Did you time that, Scott? <laughs> I know he, Scott just pointed right there like he knew it was gonna happen. Usually those big ones will swim deep, kind of like this, right before you see them. I think we got us maybe our biggest fish of the day. I don't wanna just ruin it, but the way this fish is kind of laying down, <laughs> it probably won't be that big. Oh, it's a nice one. It's a Kentucky, just like I hoped. I wanted to get a Kentucky, not, not our biggest fish of the day, but it's a nice Kentucky. Little fat Kentucky. Boy, he's not big at all. <laughs> That's what I get, I swear. He was I don't coming. Know why you're saying he is not big for a small fish? I mean, he is... it's, he's built like my son, Bub. We'll call this fish Bub. But uh, hey, you gotta understand, fast forward to the Kentucky I caught last night. That's his little baby. <laughs> <laughs> but nice fish. He fooled me, man. He came, you guys know when they come, start coming under the boat before they fight you, usually it's a big fish, not this time. There's a couple more I'm seeing, four or five fish on the screen right now. How many times did you guys come out and you just had it in your mind how you guys were gonna catch your fish that day and you just tried to force feed them, force feed them, and then you decided to do something different. I almost didn't even bring this jerk bait rod. They're right up there shallow, boy. I mean, they're. They're shallow. I'm gonna try. It's a really hard thing to film. See. I mean, this cone, guys, on active target is 12. Oh, there's a fish on it. You see that? Right there. Two of them. Oh, shooting up. Shooting up. Eat it. Oh, they didn't want it. Hope he's on it. Oh, it's a nice fish. <laughs> oh, guys, you know, that, that's heartbreaking sometimes just to have them shoot up on you and that looked like a good fish. And then, you know, they don't eat it. And I've said it multiple times a day on this, this episode. Sometimes there's something you can do about it, working it different. Maybe I should have paused it more, but a lot of times it's the nature of the active target is having to watch all these fish not eat your bait. But you'll see bass, that's a bass. Oh, there's a bass right there on, the, on my jerk bait as I'm holding it with the wrong hand. How funny is that? 
but there's a ball of bait up here that these fish are all surrounding. So what I've been doing is I've been getting on these balls of baits and then knowing there's bass on them. Man, it took a while. I went through a dead streak there. I've been getting spoiled out here. Big old Kentucky. Look at the belly. Oh, he's got the back hook. Come right up in the living room right there. <laughs> How about that? Guys, you know what? I've had about as much fun. If I'm lucky enough to get this fish in with that back hook, tonight, catching fish as I've had in a while, we've just had a heck of a night. It's hard to talk and land a fish. I don't know if any of you guys ever try it. Oh, just a nice little Kentucky bash right there. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get back. We've got some dinner we gotta be at, unfortunately. But uh, we're gonna let this fish go just like we have the rest of them. Guys, we've got three species of fish tonight on this, on this bass episode, which guys, please make this episode a hit because Scott's trying to cancel these bass episodes and that just can't happen. So like, subscribe. G3 Boats, we're in the Sportsman 1910. It is one of the best platforms you can fish off of. Look at the size of this deck. For the money, hey, I'm gonna say it. I can't go out and spend 70, 80 grand on a boat. Awesome that a lot of you guys can. These boats run in the 30s, equipped with 150 Yamaha, dual console, which I've got single in this. Check them out, g3boats.com. Hey, Lawrence Active Target, we've given you a small insight to this. We're gonna ruffle some feathers, I'm sure. I'm a believer. I'm going to keep doing it. You going to try it? We'll see. All right, guys. Thanks for watching another episode of G3 Sportsman. That's a wrap. <laughs> That's a wrap, baby. Guys, I can't stress enough. Coming out during the key periods, which is first light, last part of the day. I've got young kids. They're finally old enough now. My wife is awesome, and, and I can be away in these late evenings a little more now. And let me tell you, it made an impact me fishing afternoons a lot. You guys that know that, fishing tournaments know that. So I cannot stress enough coming out and getting this key window. Even if you got a couple hours in the summer after work, you get off at five and it's light till nine o'clock, it can be some of the best fishing you need. And don't give up. If you're fishing for three hours from six to, from five to eight, and haven't got bit, that eight o'clock to 8.45, nine o'clock can make your whole day. One hour of fishing can make your whole day.